we want to take a look at um, importing textures and meshes into the Unreal 3 game editor. So the first thing I want to do is open up Photoshop, and I kind of like to reorganize my menu here a bit. It's under graphics, and let's see, I'm going to open the 64-bit version of CS5. And when I do that, I want to create a new project. And the new project, I want to scale uh, to Unreal. So I'm going to you make sure it's in pixels. And typically on the Z-axis, most characters are 256 pixels tall. That's kind of like the normal size or the normal perspective in a room. And I'll just do a, a straight up 72 DPI there, just kind of a low res standard image. And what are we going to call this? We'll call it Pirates. Be the name of my project. I'm going to hit Control Plus to zoom in. Or you can go view and zoom in that way if you want. We'll throw some text up there. And I'm just going to open up a JPEG. And let's see. Open up a little JPEG here, picture of my family for Halloween, and actually let me, let's see, before I do that, I'm going to resize this a little bit. I'm going to go here, and I'm just going to set that to percentage, and we're just going to have it, we'll do halvesies, okay, and then I'm going to draw a mask around it, I'm going to go over here, draw a mask around it, I'm just going to copy it to the clipboard, edit, copy, come over here, and now I'm going to paste it from the clipboard, when I do look at my layer editor, notice it goes in as a layer. And let me select the pointer tool up here again. And with that layer selected, I'm just going to kind of bring that down here. All right. And when I do that, I'm going to throw some text in here as well. I'm just going to come up here, and that font's a little big. Maybe go 48 there. And let's see, I mean, it might be a little large. Let's see if I can fit all that. Yeah, that's a little large. All right, so let me scale that down just a little bit more, 36. There we go. All right, so the Germanys. Or should I do IES? I don't know. It's my last name, whatever. It's not German, though. It's Scottish. Go figure. Uh, yes, the last name is Germany, Scottish. Okay, so let's say that you know, this is what I want to export. Now what I want to do is I'm going to save it as a uh, Targa file, you know, so with the TGA extension. And I'm just I have this you know folder here where I'm working on an Unreal 3 level for Pirate Arena, a Java game tutorial that I'm I'm writing that's just a role-playing game. So I'm just going to save it as pirates.tga. Your choices are if you're going to import it in Unreal, you want to do either 24-bit or 32-bit. I'm going to choose 24-bit. Okay. So now we're done with that as a texture in Photoshop. And of course, you could have got real fancy and done some crazy custom art and whatnot, but it's just to give you an example of how to import it. We're done with Photoshop. Now it's on real time. Now let's open up the Unreal 3 game engine. All right. And when you do, by default, the generic browser will be open, but if it's not, just go to View Browser Windows and click on Generic Browser. That'll open it. What we want to do is import it. So I'm going to click on File and Import. And I want to go find that Targa file that I created in Photoshop, which is on my deep partition in the Unreal folder. And there it is, Pirates TGA. I'm going to click Open. You can go with the default My Package or give it a name. The, I'm doing a Java tutorial RPG game. And I'm doing an Unreal 3 level for it. So I'm just going to call this Pirate Arena and uh, Deco. I guess some of the decorum or whatever in the level. So I'm going to click on OK to import it. Now when I do notice by default material and texture is checked. So if I go down here, I'm going to look for my pirate arena deco and there it is. There's my texture. Okay, and it's you know proportion 256 by 256. So I'm going to right click on it now because I need to build a material from it. So I'm going to say create new material. I'm going to go up to default. It's whatever the file name is, underscore map. When I do that, notice it shows up here and it adds it. And now I need to open this in the Materials Editor. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to say uh, Material Editor. Or you can double click on it either way. And if I click on this, it just, you know, it lets me move the whole uh, structure there. But I don't want to do that. I, what I want to do is if you click here, notice how there's a little you know, yellow outline around it. I want to select that, hold down Control, drag it over to the right. See this little node here, the little black one up at the top left hand corner? Click on that and drag a wire from that to the diffuse option. When you do notice it appears here. Then you see these check marks up here. Click on the one furthest to the left to save it and apply the changes.
Okay, and now that you have built uh, material from that, we're ready to use it in a level set. We're just going to create a simple room, and we're going to add a you know a very simple mesh in that room, and we'll apply the texture, and we'll look at how to size it or proportion it. Now that we have created a texture and we've imported it into the Unreal Editor, let's uh, build an empty room, and we'll create a simple mesh to apply it to. And so I have it, you know, the material selected by default, but I'm going to go ahead and find something that I can use. Um, let's see, let me find a material that I can use. It's not too, something kind of bland. Let me go into, there you go. <clears throat> we'll just use this here. All right, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to close the generic browser now. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. <clears throat> and I'm going to click over here, and I want to build a brush. And I'm going to right-click on it. And I'm just going to make a you know, pretty normal size zoom, 2048 by 2048 on X and Y. And we'll leave the Z256, which is you know normal height for like an Unreal character. And I'm going to check hollow. This is an additive, not a subtractive uh, level in binary space. So I'm going to go ahead and click on build. And let me zoom out here so I can see it. Zoom out, zoom out, and I'll back up here <coughs> in our wireframe perspective. Back, 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 back. There you go. Back and up. All right, so you can see everything. So since it's an additive level um, in my binary space, I'm going to go ahead and click on add, and it's hollow, so it'll create a hollowed out object. I'm going to move the brush over here. I'm going to highlight this so I can see it. And now I'm going to go into it. So I'm going to go into my hollow box and I just need to add a few lights so I can see what's going on. So I'm just going to right click add actor and add a point light. And let's see if I build this. We need to pull this inside the walls here. Yeah, it's not even in, not even inside the walls. All right, so let me go over here. There. All right. So now it's inside the room, and I kind of want to go ahead and build. It's kind of like a compiler, if you you know, if you're used to the level editor. But same thing, if you changed your code in a compiler like NetBeans or Visual Studio, you'd have to recompile it all the time. Well, if you change your lighting or the geometry in a level, you have to rebuild it or recompile it. I'm going to add another point light. Let me go over here. And let's see if I can bring that light inside the room there. Drag it in. And I'm going to go ahead and I just want to rebuild. And my Siamese cat just jumped up on, on my laptop, which I'm just. Yes, Sparky, I notice you. How come cats always want to be noticed when you're doing something? All right, and let's see. Let me add a point light right here. And let me go. And again, we'll just try to drag this. Let me go drag that over there. All right, and turn around. And yeah, that's good enough. We'll, we'll light up part of the room there. All right, so if I were going to apply this texture, this is sort of a default. I, I could do it to an entire wall, and I'll show you an example of that, and then we'll build a very simple mesh with uh, the additive brush. So first, uh, I would select the surface right here, and if I want to apply the texture, let me go and open my generic browser once again and let me go find my Pirate Arena Deco package that we created and let me click on the material. Notice when I do, ta-da, there it is. All right. Let me back out and if I play from this level, I'm going to get a larger view of it. All right. So now I can move around in the game and you can see there it is. There are the Germanys and there we are, a bunch of pirates that we are. Even our dog's a pirate. Yay! But that's you know for Pirate Arena. So that's doing an entire surface, or I could do all adjacencies. Alright, now let's look at just doing a particular mesh. So we'll leave that there. 
And now I'm going to build a simple mesh with the brush. To do this, I'm going to right click on the cube brush over here on the brush builder. And that was a pretty large, good size screen, but this is going to be 256 and 256. Actually, I'll leave the Y and the Z 256. I want to make it really thin, like a, a, a thin wall, or maybe even like a painting or a sign. So I'm just going to use 10 for the X. I'm going to build the brush. All right. And let me uncheck hollow here. I don't want to make it hollow. I want to make it solid. So I'm going to click build. And I'm going to zoom in here. It's a little tiny. Notice if I come in here, way over here. See a little tiny brush there? So I'm going to go ahead and drag it over here. And you can nudge it with the arrow keys, but it's much quicker if you drag. Zoom out again. Move it in a little bit towards the middle there. All right. All righty. And to get a perspective, I'm going to highlight it and this paint up here at the top. And then let me look around and see. All right, there it is. All right, so here is, if I go through it and spin around, there is where I'm going to build the surface for that, okay? Let me back up some. And now I'm going to go over and I'm going to add it into the, because it's hollow, right? So it's empty space. So I'm going to add it into the binary space. And when I do that, now I'm going to move my brush out of the way. When I do, you can see there's the added space. And I'm going to rebuild the project so I can see what the heck I'm doing. All right. And there's the texture there. Let me add a light. And I could apply another texture. Let me, let me see. Add an actor. I'll add a point light there and drag the point light over. Let me right there and then rebuild that. I'll make that a little brighter so we can see it. There you go. So you can see here. I can actually kind of see it. And it's, you know, notice it's tiled at 256. And that's with it selected. Look, if, if for some reason you don't get it, um, here, I'll let me open up the uh, generic browser once again and select the generic material once again. Engine materials, and we'll come down here and let me find an engine. You know, that's some exotic looking crazy stuff there, but maybe not the best, but we'll use that. All right. So if we can use that. And then let's see, apply material there. All right, so let's say for some reason it, it you know it's not there and you built that. No problem. Just select the surface like I just did. Open the generic browser, go down and find your package and click on your material and poof, there it is. Alright, so the last thing, let's say I wanted to make this like a sign, which I'm going to do in, in you know the 3D version of Pirate Arena. So if I wanted to do that, I can right click on it and I can adjust the surface properties of it. And if I do, um, I'm going to come over here and I can play with the ratio. So like what if I did 0.5 and 0.5, okay? If I did that and I click apply. So if I do that, see how instead of tiling it in 4 by 4s I've just resized it. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And so now I'm going to go into the level. Let me back up some and I'm going to click on play from here. I'm going to go into the level. And notice now it's, you know, it's just like a large sign sitting in the middle of the room or a wall, a partition or something. And it does have some collision geometry to it. So, you know, on the back it's tiled. And here where I modified the surface properties, it's just one giant sign. The Germanies, yay! And there we are, a bunch, a bunch of pirates. Okay, so just a quick tutorial on how to import your own textures into Unreal so you can really start to customize your level and make it look the way that you want.